I'm here at the Maui Cattle Company in uh, Maui in Hawaii. My friend Tweedy has uh, agreed to show us around a little bit their processing plant. Uh, this, uh, where we're standing right now, used to be a pineapple processing plant, but now we're using it for Maui Cattle Company, the best pasture-fed beef uh, that we can find on Maui. And uh, we're going to go in here. Tweedy's going to give us a quick tour. This way? Yes. Thanks. But this is how, this is one, this is, yeah, one cow. One cow. Yes, that's okay. one. This is how it comes down. And you can see it's not all, what did it come out? doesn't have its weight. But we try and get them up to 550 pounds, but now that it's grass finished, they're coming in smaller. But if you look at it, at all the, um, like in the ribeyes and stuff like that, it's the, the fat content's not that, yeah? Yeah. Isn't all that much. The marbling isn't all that much, but it's actually this dry aging and how we have this thing going, blowing it, so this room is kept at a constant temperature to, to age the meat? Yes. And uh, how it is, uh, just with the wind and everything else, but... Uh, so your, your cows, you say, you shoot for 500 pounds or so on a feedlot. How, how big does it... Oh, they can get up to seven, six, seven hundred pounds at the feedlot. Oh, wow. It's just, yeah, that it's grain... It's like force feeding them yeah, but, high carbohydrates. But you know that grain makes them bloated and they can get sick and then... Just like good. Well, yeah. like with a lot of things. So now, do you want a pound of corn-fed beef that's not so good, or do you want six ounces of a really good grass-fed? I'd rather have the our, quality. Yeah, our ribeye thighs at that big. Yeah. The cattle we'll get today were slaughtered last week, Wednesday. They've been hanging up there for 12 days. We'll fill this room, and come Monday, they'll start processing. So by the time they get out, it could be 17 days age. Uh, we do. This is kind of like uh, more my sales side. Uh, this is our finished product for the stores, like I'm saying. Our back. 12 day shelf life inside the store. You can throw it in the freezer. And is the longer shelf life because of the way you treat it or is just the packaging itself? The packaging itself. It's a, a vacuum seal, uh -huh. airtight. And what advantages this gave us was um, anytime that there's a heavy contaminant, and I'll show you why we don't have that much, is you'll see air bubbles and gases coming off. Uh -huh. And this actually expands. I mean, um, once we see anything, any kind of sign, we're alarmed. And I'll explain more when we get I've back. I've seen that in the grocery store where you have vacuum pack things that are blowing up. People should know that's not the one you buy. Yeah, <laughs> and there's a reason for that yeah. too. Um, so what we do, we do a shear force test and I'll show you the machine in the back end then. What it is, it actually just probes and, uh, to take a tension reading on that. Oh. And then we'll... If it doesn't reach a certain point, and we in-house grade, we don't do U.S. I mean the choice and that kind of stuff. We we grade every carcass our own. Yeah. Everyone, and if it doesn't reach to whatever level we need it to be, we'll further age it <laughs> in the uh, grade of that. Okay. This is Antonio. Antonio. Hello. Nice to meet you. Um, but inside here, they do all the processing, fabrication. Uh, there's four of them, Antonio, Paloma, Peter you met, and uh, David. <coughs> um, what I'm most proud of this room here is the product coming out, but we rank in the top one-third of cleanliness. That's, they do a great job as far as processing, but if, the, if it's contaminated, it doesn't Amen. make any sense. I was the Our animals, it's kind of funny because They'll walk into the slaughterhouse. They'll follow you. They, I mean, it's just like, hey, where are we going? Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's... Well, there's a they lot of... They trust the, um, human beings. Um, they know that um, the human being, at least from our cattle, yeah, they're kind. They're not going to get yelled at. There's no loud noises. Um, so they don't tense up. There's no yeah. sudden... 
it, like when you're at a huge feedlot and everybody's bunched up together. And, and the like, animals are stressed. They're I mean, stressed. Th there's a lot of discussion that goes on into the ethical nature of this. And obviously there are people that are vegetarians that just don't believe that you should eat animals, that you should kill animals, that they do feel pain, that they do know these yeah. things are coming. And th there's a lot of discussion for this. To me, when the animal is treated well and lives an unstressful life, like you said earlier, there's really only one bad day. Yes. And, and my point is more, I try and bring my audience all these different foods and all these local and, and wholesome foods, and I try and urge them, that's what you need to do, is you need to buy local, you need to eat local, you need to find things within your radius that are treated humanely, that are fed good items so that you can feed yourself good items and everybody's healthy and happy so it's one of the reasons that I wanted to come here because you really are practicing I think the pinnacle of what everybody should be shooting for yeah, they say beef beef is not healthy for you beef is not good for you well it's not beef that's the fact it's those corn fed feedlot beef that yeah, is and it's exactly um, I totally understand what these guys are trying to do they need to get their beef as big and fast as possible. They need to feed a hundred million people. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna do it, and it's all about money. I mean, at Maui Cattle Company, I think our concept is kind of where it should be, and, if, um, and I understand totally what they have to do to get America fed. So that your concept is not necessarily feeding all of Hawaii, but producing a, a, a unique artisan product that you're proud of, that helps the agriculture, that helps the community. Is that? It, am I putting words no, in your no, mouth? No, no, it, it's very, very close. Um, Maui Cattle Company first basically started to be able to provide the ranchers an alternative of unhumane shipping to the mainland, the cattle. We back to where our parents, that's how they eat it. And every time the older folks eat it, it's just like, I love how your beast tastes. And it's just because that's the way you grew up on. It's just bit, just unique with this uh, volcanic soil. Uh, if you eat Hana ground beef, it'll taste different from what you probably, if you ate this week, you ate from Haleakala Ranch. They're, and they have a different grass than from Ulapalakula. But why so, do why people think that about their vegetables, but not about their beef? They think that about their coffee and their wine, but not about their beef. They know, oh, I'm only gonna buy wine from a certain area because that's where the best grapes are from. But they never stop to say, I need to pick where my beef is from. That's the thought process no, we need. That's a, that's, a good, that's a good thought. It's absolutely true. Oh, well, those uh, oranges are from Florida. I don't want, jo I want Georgia peaches. I want Florida oranges. I want- California strawberries. But yet or... they just want beef as beef. Yes. I want Maui beef. You should want Maui beef too. And that's what we're going to do. <laughs> that's what you. we're going to end on. Okay. Thanks so much for your time. No, thank you. I so appreciate it, Tweety. Okay. Way. Yeah, more people that yeah, know about this. I mean, of course, we don't have enough, actually. When